This is about an SAPI-enabled mobile health system with context awareness and recommendation engine for patients. How many of you have watched this Disney movie called Big Hero 6? In case you don't know, it's a fun Disney movie. And Bemis is a personal health companion, a huggable robot that will take care of you, always. Second question, if possible, do you want to give your family member who is sick one personal health companion? My boss of my first job told me, you must tell the conclusion at the beginning of your report. So here is my conclusion. SAPI is a very effective tool to help us build a Baymax. Of course, I will tell you why later. A little about us. In short, Classroom A is our consulting company. I have been working on SAPI project for about three years. Visca is our effort to give real-time data viz for SAPI data because we believe returning data to learners and instructors immediately is crucial. We even provide API for you to embed data viz inside your own app or dashboard. I'm also the lead of SAPI Chinese COP. Here are our major COP members. We set up our AcrossX profile, recipe, and vocabulary. Profile recipe are how we should recall and experience. Because SAPI is totally different with SCORM, it's highly flexible and extensible. This is great, but SAPI spec only guarantees data structure interoperability. Semantic interoperability must rely on people working together to decide how to record the behavior. That's why SAPI depends on COP and DISC to guarantee semantic interoperability. By the way, this extensibility and community-driven vocabulary profile recipe is also why SAPI is so powerful. Here comes the second conclusion. Successful SAPI implementation is about people working together. Among the lessons learned along the way, this is the number one factor. The next story is from ICANN Lab of National Taiwan University. According to research, average Americans check their mobile phones 150 times a day. 60% is for health purpose, like tracking fitness goal. They say they will use health app more often in the next five years. We all agree that the mobile phones are now our most intimate friend. Apple offers research kit and care kit for healthcare support and research. And Google has Google Fit SDK too. Now hospitals also use the mobile portal to engage and serve patients. Two thirds of mobile health app only provides health information. One third is to monitor physiological value. It's not enough for special need patients. In this case, 92% of spinal cord injury patients need to use wheelchairs. Within 10 to 15 years, 50 to 70% have upper limb overuse problem. The possibility of chronic illness increased significantly. So that's why we need to monitor patients' daily activities and motions of upper limb. The solution is to develop smart chair app that provides instructional video of rehab for patients to follow along, medical knowledge, peers interactions functionality, activity monitoring and management. From the data collected, the system behind it we call context awareness suggestion engine. In short, iCase builds context awareness and then provides recommendations dynamically to support patients. At the center is the smart chair app. The data from the wheelchair and the prescription from physician and therapist are sent to here to integrate with data collected by smart chair app altogether to calculate and process. Now this app is offered to spinal cord injury patients in these two organizations. 
Let's identify problems to be solved regarding these two aspects. Notice that this is how we should use SAPI. Pinpoint problems first. Not sending whatever SAPI data you can send without purpose in mind. First, for user, frequent clicks will result in chronic injuries. Solution, machine will build context awareness from user history, prescription, and other contexts and prompt recommendations dynamically. This reduced clicks also provide guidance at the same time. Second, we need to communicate between different services, for example, the site for therapists, the wheelchair vendor system. In order to solve this, SAPI is leveraged for data transfer and integration. Third, system developers need a more efficient way to collect user behavior to feedback to improve the system. Also, after each revision, users need efforts to relearn the newly designed interface. Is there a more flexible and agile way? Solution is to build a recommendation engine to prompt recommended action to support user as well as collecting feedback. Developer will update the system design only after the hit rate of recommendation is higher than a threshold. Methodology. Let's talk about data collection first. SmartShare is a hybrid app with UI based on web language. Here we discuss how to collect data. Although it is easy and fast to access server log, but we cannot collect JavaScript event, so the actual usage cannot be completely recorded. As for client level, there will exist a problem of grammar incompatibility in migration if we use direct access between app and database server. So we decide to leverage an intermediary server side as escrow service to avoid grammar migration issue. Since SAPI is an open standard, so it is used as intermediary server. SAPI is a user-centered data format, use actor, verb, object, along with other rich contextual and result data. The experience can be captured with necessary details. You might know much better than me, for medical data, context information is crucial. And then this allows collecting and transferring data in between heterogeneous platforms through intermediary server, the Learning Record Store, LRS. Now let's look at context awareness modeling. Context could be static or dynamic and belong to many categories. The matter to our analytics. You can imagine sensors are like our five senses, and computing is like our brain, but all five senses belong to an organic system, and all those sensors' data are heterogeneous data. So only with SAPI, we can record heterogeneous data in a coherent way, so those sensors' data can be put together immediately to send to computing brain to build context awareness. For example, BAMES can observe when, how long, with whom the patient did exercises. For first phase, user context and time context are taken into modeling. So how does computer brain work? It's like BAMES can reason that Patient walks longer when it's morning than afternoon, or exercises longer when exercising together with peers. There are many well-developed 
machine learning methods to let machines find patterns in data and do predictions. Statistics is statistical inference from history data. For example, if a patient is more candy than others in the past, we can assume he will eat more candies in future. Sequential pattern is to analyze data pattern sequences on timeline. For example, if the patient walks longer in the morning, machine can suggest him to walk in the morning. Or if he usually did A and B in sequence, the system can prompt B after he does A to make the user interface more friendly, which is especially useful for spinal cord injury patients. Association rule is to find the association possibility whenever A happens, B will happen. For example, if B is something we like to avoid, then machine detects A happen, it can provide intervention or alarm humans to take actions accordingly. Classification is to classify old data and predict future data. For example, John is more self-driven and Mary is more social-oriented. It can prompt more social interaction streams to Mary to motivate her and a more personal dashboard summary for John. Or machine can detect patient's self-reporting data is fake. Another possibility is that potential illness might be found through user's data pattern. Physicians can plan prevention care or early treatment. Finally, clustering is group data by property similarity. There might be no predefined groups at all in the beginning. It really is finding patterns in data themselves. For the first phase, these two methods are used to do data modeling here. This is a conceptual system architecture. Mostly you can have an idea about how the system works to process data to support users. This API collects data from functionalities interface into building behavior model, which will be sent to context awareness model for calculation, as we explained before. Then combined with expert knowledge, this data will be processed by filter model to sort out suggested next steps and offer to the patient. The cost-benefit analysis is to analyze if this recommendation engine really improves user experience and solve the issue. The block behavior model is where SAPI works, so let's go into more details here. This is a way to model interaction data from this mobile app. First, interface segmentation, then block naming. It's suggested to make it meaningful for both humans and machine to read. Third, map and design SAPI statements. A simple example is like this. John recorded discomfort record. That's the most basic sentence of an SAPI statement. Along with this, context information can be recorded as well, such as timestamp, when did this happen, location, where did this happen, result, what's the discomfort level, or even the environment temperature. The user behavior records will be processed along with context awareness model using those mentioned machine learning methods to model data and find patterns. Also taking into consideration of current context such as current time and location. This filter model is to filter and sort the recommended next steps for the user. Usually this kind of recommendation engine only factors in user's habit. But for a patient, we need to put therapist prescription into filter model. 
All recommended actions are referring to the prescription list. The priority is adjusted according to user's history and context, for example, time. It adjusts the weight for recommending actions according to user's history data. For behaviors with lower frequency, the weight will be increased. For behaviors with higher frequency, the weight will be reduced or totally removed if the frequency is over a threshold. The recommendation engine prompts recommended action at 0.5 layer. It's on top of the current hierarchy. So after the user login, it will see the prompt recommendations actions in sequence. As I mentioned, this reduces clicks and provides guidance as well. Future work. We can add voice recognition, voice control, and wearables for monitoring purpose. For example, measuring quantified data of patient's movement, or monitoring eyeballs brainwave, depending on the pinpoint purpose. If we have more sensors, those data might help us get more context information. Then we can answer more questions. But some context data will be collected by designing the functionalities, such as facilitating interactions between patients and caregivers, physicians, and we can analyze the impact of such social contexts. Based on the same system architecture, two related works are first, food control for cancer patients to help them balance between preferences and nutrition requirements. Second, the other is in learning and training domain. In that case, learning plans designed by teachers will replace the prescription. The strategy here is the collaboration relation between machine and experts, therapists and teachers. First, the machine builds recommendations from experts' prescription and users' behavior history to balance both dynamically. The output of machine learning is under monitoring of experts. The expert can modify the recommendation if needed, and then machine will fit to that label data every time. That means machine learns from its humans, collaborator, and real data continuously. The benefit for experts to use this kinds of system is that collected data can give them a better picture about their patients or students. They can interact with them whenever needed. And with enough training, machine's recommendation can be very helpful to share the expert's workload in. He might even find machine's findings from data are valuable inputs to his prescription design. Now we can have tons of medical devices and sensors to, to collect data around a patient. Even swallow appear to take pictures inside the body. Data, data, data everywhere. Two things we care here. As mentioned before, for medical data, the related context of a data point is very important. And SAPI can record that in a standard way. So finally, we can record human behavior data in a more human way. Second, now all these data talk in different languages. If they talk in different languages, we cannot make sense out of them or use them until the time and computing power are committed to integrate and interpret them. SAPI data are highly structured in a pre-designed way, can be integrated meaningfully as soon as collected. Data can be put to use right away for human to read, for machine to compute and respond. And service can talk to each other and work together in real time to serve humanity as soon as possible. Can you imagine what if 
It takes you three days to see the woman standing in front of you. Will your response be way too late? But now each data from different sources are like a piece of the puzzle. If without SAPI, we cannot see the real-time whole picture. There we go. Data with, with SAPI can help you see the whole picture in real time. Zoom in to see a tree or zoom out to see a forest. For learners, instructors, patients, family, and therapists. Three takeaways. SAPI is a very effective tool in enabling app to serve humanity as soon as possible because it connects heterogeneous data intermediately. Second, SAPI is about people working together, usually driven by people who care about patient center or learner center service. Then talk to an SAPI expert about your questions needed to be answered. Work together to design SAPI implementation. To reduce technological barrier, SAPI wrappers and connectors are available. Third, the best part, SAPI is about connecting current technologies instead of reinventing wheels. Maybe you've heard of API economy. SAPI is API for experience data. If with proper SAPI profile recipe design, the data can be plugged with machine learning API or our IKs system. Think of the fact that we have such personalized advertisement from Google and Facebook. Can we bring that personalization technology to learners and patients? I think it's up to all of us.